What's up YouTube? David here, the Woodworking Accountant. It has been a long winter here in Missouri, and I'll tell you what, I've had a lot of time to read up on some beekeeping books, some beekeeping blogs, and I've even watched some beekeeping YouTube videos. And I'll tell you what, my number one goal, my number one goal for 2018 is to grow my bee yard. I want to bring perhaps twice as many bees into the 2019 season as I have here in 2018. And so I've taken a number of steps. As you can see in this picture, I built some nukes. I'm gonna be doing some splits. I'm gonna be splitting my mature hives. In addition to that, I need to build all the equipment that I will need to sustain the populations that I hope to build. Now it is April and, and I hope not to jinx myself. However, I thought if I'm going to build beehives, if I'm going to build frames, I'm going to need some beehive stands. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So I went to the hardware store today, I went to Home Depot, and I bought 10 2x6s and 11 2x4s. Now my goal for this year, or my goal for this project, is to build three hive stands. And then I also have, as you can see in this picture, I have a hive stand that's supported by cinder blocks and it's starting to get a bit of a lean and I just would prefer to have some legs under it. So with this material here, I'm going to build three hive stands and I'm going to build legs for a fourth hive stand. When you are thinking about how much do I want to invest in a hive stand, is there such thing as overbuilding? Well certainly, yes, absolutely. However, my goal for this for this hive stand is to last 25 to 30 years. Now you may say that is a lofty goal for something that spends 365 days a year outside exposed to the elements. However, this design, the paint that I'm going to use and the way I finish this, I fully expect this to last 25 years and anything less than that is a failure. Now that said, this is not going to be the cheapest option. Now I'll give you an example. I just, as you can see in this receipt, I spent about $270 on materials for this project to build three hive stands. If you factor in the price of screws, the price of glue, I'm going to say each hive stand is going to be approximately $100. Now, could you have done this in a more cost-effective manner? or more cheaply? Absolutely. If you wanted to cut costs, the number one thing you would do is instead of buying treated wood, as you see right here, you just buy standard uh, air-dried pine. Just use your typical construction lumber. However, I wanted treated material because I know that this is going to be exposed to the elements 365 days a year, and I want it to last. Now, if you get on some forms, or you go to any beekeeping Facebook groups and you look at the discussion about do I use treated material or untreated material for my beehive stand, you're going to find two opinions. And I'll tell you what, I encourage you to do your own research. After you do your own research, you may find, I don't want to use untreated material, and that's fine, stick with that. I can tell you, I'm not a biologist, I'm not a, a, a bee scientist, but I, what I will tell you is just from my personal experience, I have used treated wood in all of my hive stands uh, up until this point. I have not personally experienced any problems. Typically the bees land on the screen bottom board, they go into the hive, and they really don't have any contact with this treated material. Now, if you've had different experiences, or perhaps one of your mentors has had a different experience, don't use treated wood. That's not what this video is about. All right, I got my chop saw set up, and the first thing I'm going to do is cut my cross braces for the hive stand. This is going to be cut out of a 2x6, and it's going to measure 18 and a quarter. Now, you may be curious why that cross beam is 18 and a quarter, and I'll tell you the reason why. You know when you're doing hive inspections and you pull a frame out and you just don't have anywhere to set it? With 18 and a quarter cross beams, you've got a nice little spot for all your frames to sit. Now it's 
time to cut the legs. These are going to be made out of a 2x4 and I'm going to cut 6 for each hive stand. I'm going to cut a 24 inch 2x4 and a 29 and a half inch 2x4. And what it's going to look like, this will be the longer one, this will be the shorter one, but it's going to be an offset. And that 2x6 frame is going to come and sit on there and it's just going to be two pieces of support right here. It'll make a little more sense when you see the assembly, but time to cut the two by fours. All right, now that we got all of our pieces cut, it's time to start painting. Now, for those of you that are using treated wood, you're gonna need to find a paint that is compatible with treated wood. For this project, I'm gonna be using Olympic Maximum. Uh, I'm not a paint expert, but I would encourage you to go to the hardware store and ask somebody for paint that is compatible with treated wood. Otherwise, it's gonna peel right off. I've made this mistake before. As you can see, when I was painting, I had a tarp laid out in my basement and I spread all the pieces out on the ground. And I'll tell you what, I have a little pro tip for you. And that is an extension for your brush or for your roller. I am, as you know, if you've watched my other videos, I'm an accountant and I love to save money. And if I don't have to have it, then I won't buy it. But I'll tell you what, this was four bucks at Lowe's. It fits into a standard size roller. And as you're standing upright painting, you feel like a king or a queen. So I tell you what, get yourself one of these. Your back will thank you for it. Over the weekend, I was able to put two coats of paint on all the pieces I'm going to be using for the project. Now that I'm done with that, it's time for assembly. First, we're going to talk about legs. Now, as I mentioned before, the legs are going to be made up of two 2x4s. Two There's going to be a short piece and a long piece and there's going to be five and a half inches difference. Now here I'll show you why. On the long side of this hive stand is going to be a 10 foot 2 by 6 and it is five and a half inches in width. So as you can see the leg sitting here, that 10 foot cross piece is going to go just like this. And with six total legs per hive stand, that 10 foot board is going to be supported in three different areas. I'll show you a little more about that later in the assembly. All right, so it's time to start assembling these. Now, with the two by four stacked right next to each other, we've got three inches right here. Now, I do like to countersink my screws a little bit, so I went with two and a half inch drywall screws. Now, as you can see, if we come in from this way, we're gonna have good penetration, but there's gonna be a little gap here that's not held tight by the screw. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw this from both sides. I'm going to come in like that and then I'm going to stagger them and I'm going to come in at a different angle. Uh, this is going to give this a nice tight seal in addition to the wood glue that I use in the middle. Alright, so now we're going to mark up our board. This is the short board and we're going to use a straight edge and make two lines. They're going to be one inch from the outside on either side. All right, now you're gonna to wanna to take the longer piece, set your straight edge to one and three quarters and make another line down the middle of this. So once you have your lines drawn, go ahead and take your tape measure and starting with the short side, you're gonna be alternating here. Your measurements are gonna be one inch, eight and a half, 
15 and a half and 23 inches in alternating order. On this long board, where the screw holes are going to be right in the middle, you're going to pre drill that for four and three quarter, 12 inches, and 19 and a quarter. And as you can see, these are alternating and are going to form a nice hold, nice grip for us. So these, our lines are going to go on the outside. We're going to drill our holes and then we'll be ready for assembly. Now, measuring out these lines for all six really it would be 12 boards is kind of a pain so once you have the first one measured and drilled just take a whole bunch of them square them up and get yourself a flat edge and strike your lines and it's not too hard to estimate what's an inch in and then on your long pieces you're just going to aim for center started this project my intent was to have spots for four screen bottom boards and hives on top of that and as I started laying this out I realized that this little gap here I'm usually only putting one or two frames in there as I'm inspecting the hive and I was able to fit five hives on here and leave a 10 inch gap in between each hive to set those frames in order to get all of these lined up evenly and have an even space in between each hive, I had to bring five screen bottom boards up from my basement. Now, you're not gonna have to do that because I wrote a little cheat sheet for you. The next step in the assembly is taking these cross beams and mounting them to the 10 foot two by six. So as you can see, there's two columns of measurements. First, we're gonna talk about this measurement. You're gonna set your workpiece like this, upright, vertical, long ways. And starting from left to right, let me move the camera, you're gonna start at the leftmost end, and with the exception of the first one, you're gonna strike a line, and then to the right side, you're gonna mark an X. And you're gonna move down this entire workpiece, and for instance, if we look back at this chart, 26 and a quarter. If we go down to the measuring tape, we've got 26 and a quarter marked right here. And then to the right of the line, we're going to put an X. Now these X's are going to show you where to put the cross beam. So to give you an example of how we're using these X's, if you look at this uh, 14 and three quarter number, we go down here, we made a mark at 14 and three quarter, and then we made an X to the right of that line. That's where our studs are going to line up, or that's where that cross beam is going to line up. And you're going to have the exact same measurement on the other side. Now the second column of data shows you where to pre-drill. What we're going to do is we're going to take the workpiece and we're going to turn it over on its side. All right, so an example here is we're going to look at this 15 and a half measurement. Again, starting from left to right, we're going to take our tape and find 15 and a half. This is where I'm going to pre-drill four holes, and that's just going to make it a lot easier during assembly. Now it's time to put the legs on the hive stand. Now, as you can see, it's easiest to look at an assembled hive stand. Starting from left to right, there's gonna be a hive here and then a spot to hold the frames during inspection, a hive, dead space, hive, so on and so forth. So, as you can see, under this first colony, I'm gonna have two legs that are offset. And I'm gonna skip one, now I'm gonna go down to the middle. Again, two legs that are offset. And then at the end, two legs that are offset. Let me back up and give you a look at that. 
Starting with the front right corner, or really any front corner you want, you're gonna take your leg and it's gonna fit down perfectly like this if you followed all the measurements. As you can see here, I've got the long piece on the inside, that way on the outside, it's a nice flush straight corner. I just dropped off the hive stand at my apiary and I need to put one more coat of paint on it and then it is ready to go. So that is the end of today's video. Thank you for watching. A couple things, if you like today's video, please hit like and then hit subscribe. For a complete list of materials that I used in this project, check the links in the show notes. Thanks for watching and good luck this season.